Hello and welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam. But three years ago, a young musician from Estonia had a crazy idea, and that was he was going to uh, walk the distance around the world, around the equator of the world, um, in a matter of nine to ten years. Now, he started out with no expectations, but ended up with a whole different point of view uh, about the world and about the people that he met. So far, he is uh, here in Vietnam, and he has done a distance so far of 15,240 kilometers. And we're very lucky to have him in our studio today. His name is Mago Mak. Hello, Mago. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming here on our show, and congratulations so far on making it, you know, 15,000 kilometers, that's amazing. Yes, that's uh, very <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yes, how, how, you know, how is it possible to walk such an incredible amount of distance? Mm. Well, uh, I go very slowly. Uh, in one day I walk uh, 25 to 50 kilometers. And I don't walk every day, I have a lot of resting days. Sometimes even I rest one week, two weeks. So I don't want to break any speed record or kilometer record. So I go very yes. slowly. You take your time and you enjoy also the places that you visit, right? Yes. Let's go back now to the beginning. When did you first have this idea of wanting to walk around the world? Uh, well, this uh, idea or feeling, it happened actually quite suddenly. It happened just uh, two, week, uh, two months before I started to have this feeling that uh, I really want to go traveling again. And uh, now in all my life I've been traveling in 36 countries. And uh, then I got uh, uh, some inspiration from people who have done this, who have walked around the world before. How many people? Have uh, now over 10 people have wow. uh, already completed. Some go very slowly, 11 years, even 20 years. Some do speed record two and a half or three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I start to have this feeling that, wow, I also have a lot of energy uh, and I could also do it. And then after, after some time, I, I started to have a very strong feeling that I have to do it. At least I have to start. Uh, so for me, it started to feel like the only right way to continue on with my life. What did your family and friends think? I mean, obviously, mm. uh, you know, when you're settled in a country, you mm. have your life, you have your work, and all of a sudden, mm. you have this kind of almost ridiculous idea that you would go mm. off traveling mm. for a decade. I feel very lucky and uh, very blessed in many ways because all my family members, they also love traveling very, very much. All my family members, they have been many countries and they understand and feel the value of traveling very, very deeply and very strongly. And uh, also before this walking tour, I've done many other crazy trips, hiking in deserts and uh, in, in the snow, very extreme, extreme uh, conditions. So when I told I want to walk, my whole family were very supportive. Born in 1990 in Hapsalu, Estonia, Mego Mark grew up in a family of five, including his parents and two sisters. The village where Mego lived had only around 70 residents and nothing else but vast fields, forests, and rivers. Mego had a chance to immerse himself in nature since a young age. He lived away from home starting at 11 years old, going to the capital city of Tallinn to study. It was also during this time he continued playing the trumpet and piano. He would later become a classical music composer and also the lead musician of a wind instrument ensemble in Lahula, Estonia. This was his life, up until his life-changing decision to walk around the world. How did you, um, you know, begin to fund this trip? Obviously, mm. to travel around the world, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's a very costly mm. matter. Yes. Well, when I started, I had uh, very little money, less than 15 euros wow. total in my bank and in my cash. But I had a very big dream and I felt I cannot delay anymore. I have to go. So I was thinking I can ask some water from people and I can buy some bread. And I was even collecting some leaves on the road in springtime I on the road that I knew I could eat. So I washed the leaves and I was eating like this. And I always carry with me a tent mm. so I could sleep uh, uh, everywhere. Then uh, after I walked uh, two uh, weeks from Estonia to Latvia, from the next country. Then one reporter from my local state uh, wrote uh, news uh, about me. And then many people, they start to send me letters. Wow, oh, your mission, your story, very inspiring. They see my photos and they 
tell that they feel like they're traveling together with me or mm. through me. Mm. So many people ask, I want to help you financially. How can I do this? That's great. So many people start to help me. But later I also sold my house to oh, make wow. this journey easier because I don't plan to go back home for... Uh, At least another, you know, seven years, yes. right? Yes. Tell us about preparing for the trip. We, we, we talked about how it was two months, but did you have to prepare like physically, yeah. um, mentally? Uh, before this walking, I, w I loved to go running almost every day for two years. So I run five kilometers, sometimes 10. But I was not, uh, this running was not a conscious preparation for the walk. I just loved to go running. But then when the, I had this uh, feeling that now is the time to start walking, I felt that physically I should be also capable of uh, doing that. And I had some previous experience with hiking, carrying a pack bag and a tent and surviving in the nature, in, uh, also in the snow, in the desert, many places. Tell us about, you know, the backpack that you carry around. Um, what is mm. the luggage that you have in mm. traveling around? Well, my backpack is uh, here. And now I have changed uh, three bags. And the only thing that's missing now is my tent. Mm. I always carry some food with me, some water, normally peanuts and some fruits because I'm a vegetarian. Oh, yes. And peanuts are very, very high energy, mm. uh, highest in the food. Uh, I have very minimum clothes, very, very minimum, uh, so because I have to carry everything on my back. Passport, the camera, some technological... How heavy thing. is your now, now load it's, normally? Uh, together with all food and water, it's uh, 16 kilograms. Yes. Can you show us a little bit about, yeah. you know, some of the main things in your backpack that you cannot um, not have? Yes. Okay, here, here I have a sleeping bag down here. Yes, so that is uh, one important thing. And also a raincoat. A raincoat? Mm. Mm -hmm. so, and I have a gift, uh, two bamboo flutes. Oh, can you they show They are us? Uh, from Vietnam. Mm. Yes, I don't know how to play flutes, so I was now learning uh, in Vietnam for... Uh, two months yes uh, also i have a power bank to charge uh, because many times i'm in the nature so i don't have access to i believe you have a map yes, of your I have a, approximate mm. route yes can yes. you show us uh, uh, this map uh, actually i don't use for navigation i just use it to show the people where is my country uh. because uh, my country is uh, very small so most of the people they have uh, they have no idea about estonia Okay, yes. so uh, here uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. Laos, Cambodia, and Estonia is here, up in uh, yes. Northern Europe. Yes. Yeah. Before you went, did you kind of draw out like an approximate yes. route? Yes, yes. Can you show me the route? Yes, this was the route, and uh, now we can see a line here. Mm -hmm. So we started oh, from yes. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Greece. Wow, uh, so through it, Eastern Europe? Mm, yes, exactly, 10 countries through Europe. Yes. And not using any, no car, no bus, no motorbike. Yes, bike. because obviously this Nothing. is all land, so you walk the entire way. Yes. Then I crossed uh, uh, Turkey, yes. also Iran. Into Asia? Yes, and then uh, I crossed the sea to Mumbai, India. Yes, how would you cross the uh, sea I crossed normally? the sea by plane, this route I took by plane. That took by plane, uh, yeah. Sometimes some small uh, seas, uh, rivers, I cross by ship also. To cross India and Nepal, two countries, uh, it, it took me one year and 22 days because wow. India is uh, very big. So tell us about your journey. We have some photos here. 
uh, May 11, 2014. That's the day when you began the journey. Yes. So, yes, this is the first day uh, when I started to walk uh, from Tallinn, the capital of Estonia in Northern Europe. And uh, this is uh, my father, uh, my father, Markus uh, Merck, and uh, the day when I left my uh, home city and said because... goodbye with him. Oh, here, I use a lot of shoes, <laughs> as yes, you can see. Down, the, uh, down there, my old shoes and then the new shoes. As I see my old shoes, very, very <laughs> finished. <laughs> and now, in three years, I have used uh, 16 pairs of shoes. Oh, wow. And is this a uh, dog? This, this is met? one very special dog in Hungary. Uh, I found her uh, on one road. Someone had left her there, and I was the only one walking. So she was very, very hungry. I gave her some food, some water, and then she started to follow me. Uh, and uh, she was uh, walking with me uh, uh, 10 days and 9 nights wow. together, over 200 kilometers. Yes, and, and I, still in Hungary, right? Uh, we crossed the border to Romania and I found a new home for the dog. And uh, it was very fun to walk with the dog uh, because she was never asking where are we going. She why, just followed Why you. we are going, how long we are going. <laughs> she, she was always so joyful, you know, just, just going. And, uh, and I found her food and she was sleeping outside my tent. Uh, this is here one special photo uh, when I arrived uh, to the Mediterranean Sea and I realized I had walked through Europe uh, four months. Four months to Over 3,000 kilometers, 10 countries 10 in Europe. 10 countries, wow. But I remember the feeling if I crossed one, uh, one curve and I saw the map that the sea is coming and then suddenly I see the sea, the air, you know, the endless uh, space of the sea. It was so, uh, how to say, ecstatic. Uh, Inspiring. Feeling. Is yeah. that you? Yes, that's, that's <laughs> me. Uh, here I have a very long beard. This uh, photo in country number 11 in Turkey. In Turkey. For many, many weeks I was also walking in the snow, very cold, minus 5 to mm. maximum minus 17 degrees. How was that experience? Uh, it was a little bit easier because in my country, Northern Europe, for four months we have a lot of snow. That's true. So I grew up uh, as a boy playing in the snow, making snow castles. But here I still wear the uh, uh, double thermal clothes and very good equipment uh, to make it easier. Ah. This is uh, Mumbai, the yes. biggest city in India. Very, very super crowded, a lot of people living in the street. Uh, this one very special home. Uh, I was invited to uh, one family and they lived, uh, their home was uh, just one room, one very small room. And the area was uh, six meters by six meters, just a little bit bigger than this uh, stage mm. here. We didn't have water there inside, so they had to carry with some buckets, go uh, many hundred meters to carry water. And uh, one, only one bed for the oldest men. And I was living there for two nights and two days in a very small area together with nine other people. Wow. I was the tenth people there. And we also had uh, uh, two dogs and two cats living under the bed. Yes. And, and yet they welcomed you into their home. Yes, and we all slept on the floor. But, but uh, I, I received there the very, very, uh, how to say, very true, very sincere respect. Yeah. And yeah. I remember one time the same family, they told in the morning, we don't even have much food, much money to buy food sometimes, but some uh, relatives are helping. And then they said, but uh, it's not so important. Uh, uh, most important is how we treat each other as humans. Mm. I remember this message was very good. Yes. So yes. even when people don't have much, they are mm. still very much, they have a big heart. Yes, and the human dignity, mm. the dignity of the human spirit, I would say it's, it can be so bright. Along the road, Mego usually records his experience using his mobile phone. Today I'm already eating bamboo leaves and drinking the jungle water. There's a very nice rock here. And suddenly there's one rainbow up in the sky. And I have to tell you that the bamboo leaves are very tasty. I feel like a panda, panda beer. It's now 11 o'clock and it's very hot today. Very, very hot and humid air. So. I'm resting now for some time. And this walking tour that I'm doing, it's not very easy. It's very, very hard. <laughs> it's a lot of rain now, so it's uh, time to use uh, two raincoats. <laughs> I 
I'm very very tired now. All I wish to do is uh, to find some uh, uh, guest house or hotel, wash, eat, sleep and use internet. So not very big dreams. Shower, bed, food and internet are my dreams now. Mago is often most drawn to musicians he meets all over the world. Mago also greatly enjoys hanging out with children in the different places he visits. <laughs> Tell us about the homes, the different homes that you've been mm -hmm. to. Um, it's a, a wonderful aspect of your traveling because you are staying with the locals, um, you're eating their food, you're learning mm. the language, and you're getting to know more about the people of the locality. Mm. Um, tell us about how many homes have you been to, do you remember? Well first, uh, I feel that being inside a local home is uh, the most special thing that can happen to any traveler because home is like the most uh, private place. I would say home is like the holy place and when, whenever I, I'm invited to some local home, I feel I can see everything inside, how the people treating each other, you know, it's, it's so private, so intimate. So I feel very, very blessed, very lucky. And now in three years, I have been living and sleeping in more than 170 different homes. Wow. With 170 families. And in very different places, sometimes uh, the biggest cities in the world, like Istanbul, Mumbai, New Delhi, Bangkok. Uh, but sometimes uh, deep, very deep uh, in jungles, in some bamboo huts. So it's a very human experience. Sometimes I'm in the slum area, sometimes I meet some uh, millionaires or world famous people. So all kinds of people. Uh, yes, how, how mm. does the encounter usually happen that you kind of end up in their home? Uh, many times when I walk, uh, people just uh, stop me. They want to give me tea and then they ask some questions. And when I tell that I've been walking for many years or thousands of kilometers, uh, and then people ask, where do you sleep tonight? I say, I don't know, maybe I go camp somewhere or some temple or police station or hospital or any place. Then they ask, oh, please, please come sleep in my home for one night or two nights. What have some of these families taught you and how have they impacted the way you look at life and mm -hmm. you look at this journey that you're taking? Mm -hmm. I told you about one family where we slept on a small, small house. Mm -hmm. Just a few weeks later, I was in another home. And this family has a big uh, company. They are making Ayurvedic medicine. And uh, this family, very, very wealthy, super wealthy. And my friend there, his name is Tarshil. He, he told me many times, he told me, you see our family, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, money. We go holidays to Dubai many, many times. They travel around the world. And he told me, uh, the very same message I heard in the slum area. He told me, but this is not most important for us. For our family, always most important how we treat each other as uh, human beings. So I was amazed how I got the same message of human, uh, how to say? Kind of human interaction mm. and connection. Yes. Yes, and, and, and kind of more the altruistic values rather than anything else. Yes, yes. Yeah. Emotional and the feeling uh, aspects of uh, being a human. Yes. Throughout your kind of journey so far, were there any moments that, you know, left you scared? Uh, yes, yes, sometimes. Uh, I was, uh, I think first in Turkey, some areas when I was walking in the snow, crossing some hill areas, there are a lot of wolves there. Uh, and uh, in the winter, wolves are very hungry because they don't have much food to eat. And in, I remember in the night I was camping, I hear from every direction, I hear the wolves howling. 
Ooh, like this. Yeah. So I, every I woke up like after every uh, short time. I feel that's I felt first time. This is too extreme, you know. <laughs> it's just why I'm just uh, in the middle of the hills, no villages around, and uh, just a lot of wolves. Sometimes I see some snakes and some big spiders, and one time crocodiles. So. <laughs> wow. That's yes. But I, I still feel the hardest challenges are the inner challenges. Yes. How to handle my emotions, negative emotions, how to uh, overcome them with some positive ones. After walking through 18 countries and completing more than 12,000 kilometers of land, Mego arrived in Vietnam. Here he was greeted by a warm welcome. He participated in many activities with the local people he met, including holding exchanges or teaching English. The experiences he had in Vietnam have become unforgettable memories for Mego. So after 18 countries now, you finally came to Vietnam in November 2016. How did you feel upon arriving in Vietnam? What was ah. your first impression? <laughs> My first impression was super positive. I arrived uh, this uh, photo here. November 1st from Lao Bao. I remember the very first day, a uh, lot of people greeting me suddenly. When I was in Lao, people not greeting so much. And I think in the very first day, I was greeting over 50 or 60 people. Uh, so I was very excited uh, to walk in Vietnam. Yes. Can you share with us your route in Vietnam? Mm -hmm. So here we have... Uh, oh, uh, the map of Vietnam? Yes, yes. the map of mm -hmm. Vietnam. Uh, so here is Lao Bao. Yes. And first I walked to Dong Ha to meet the East Vietnam Sea. I was very, very eager to meet with the sea again. Yes. Uh, then I walked from Dong Ha to Dong Hui, then to Pong Nha Caves, and on Ho Chi Minh Highway I was walking to Wing. Wow. And then from Wing, continuing on Ho Chi Minh Highway to Hanoi. I was planning to go to China, but I didn't get the visa, so mm. I was changing my route. And from Hanoi, I walked uh, back to Wing, back to Dong Hui, Dong Ha, then to uh, Hoi An, uh, Da Nang, Hoi An then to Quanggai, Quang Gai. Quang Gai, yeah. then mm -hmm. I crossed the hills uh, to Gontum, very beautiful route, so many wow. hills, uh, very small villages there. Then from Gontum I walked to Bon Ma Tuot. Yes, in the central highlands. Yes, and then to Dalat, uh, also a lot of beautiful hills there, a lot of nature, and from Dalat uh, walking to Ho Chi Minh. In Vietnam when I arrived to Ho Chi Minh, because I make the circle like this, yes. I completed walking uh, over 3,000 kilometers, wow. only in Vietnam. Brushing my teeth. This is uh, surely one of the smallest and one of the longest roads I have walked alone. For seven hours I have been walking uh, on this very, very small hill road and just me alone here with the nature and I don't feel uh, lonely because in the nature now there is only life around me full life in its fullest expression just only life around me Kind people now gave me a lot of food. How do you find?
time walking in Vietnam compared to other nations that uh, you've walked in? I have to tell you, it's one of my favorite countries, very, very favorite, because every day when I walk, uh, I see, uh, I cross a lot of villages, of course, hundreds of villages. Normally, I think tourists don't go there. And many times people say, oh, you are the first white uh, human I see, I only see in TV, you know, because tourists, they maybe pass, they don't stay there. So people give me a lot of attention, especially in small places. They are you hungry? Do you want tea, coffee, Thai, Thai? <laughs> so they want to give me food, invite to their homes. And in Vietnam, I feel I received the highest number of gifts. People uh, want to give me shoes, uh, trousers, a lot of t-shirts, a uh, uh, new bag even, uh, uh, so many things. <laughs> yes, That's and many, many times I cannot carry all the gifts, so I also give them away. Uh, now this is my dear mother, her name is uh, Maria, and she came to meet me uh, in Vietnam February 20th. And it was also a special day because it was my birthday. Uh, oh. so February 20th. So she flew to Da Nang and we met in Da Nang city. It is uh, February 20th, midday. Today is my birthday and uh, I am now here in Da Nang International Airport. Uh, after uh, half an hour, my mother will arrive here and I have come to pick her up. How great, meeting my mother on my birthday, 27th birthday. After meeting each other in Da Nang, Mego and his mother bought a bicycle, attaching his backpack to the back seat. Mego's mother biked alongside him as he ran. In two weeks, the duo covered the distance of 220 kilometers from Da Nang to Quang Nai. I'm running now uh, out from uh, Hoi An city. And my mother is somewhere behind me. Already second time we have a flat tire. He came by pump and pumped our wheel. Sending a postcard to our grandmother. How was it traveling with your mom, you know, with her biking and you running and yes. having her there? My mother is very great. She, she's uh, I have no words to describe, she's very strong and she also is very positive. No matter what happens, she always sees the positive side and she's ready for anything. Throughout this journey of so many different locations and um, in Vietnam, was there a particular location in the country that stuck to mind that you saw as one of your favorite places in Vietnam? Oh, I feel very, every day was my favorite, I have to admit. But personally, I feel I'm a nature person. I love natural scenery, like open spaces, horizons, uh, sky, and the hills. So uh, special walks I remember from Quang Gai to Kontum over the hills, and to see very remote villages, the people there. It's always special, where the tourists don't go, to see the tribal, how their dresses, mm -hmm. uh, very colorful dresses, how they carry their children. And you mentioned that when you visit a number of countries, uh, you pick up the language. Was that the same for Vietnam? And yes, Chuk Chuk, I picked up. I know one song, I know and some... Oh, you things. picked up a song. Mm. Can you please share with mm. us uh, Bill, song? Bill's heart may joy. Yes? Yes, okay, but I don't know the whole old song, just beginning. Okay. Bill's heart may joy, chon sa joy, em ơi hang van đời, Bill's heart may joy, ting ka. So that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very nice. That's awesome. Now, Meiko, I understand that before this journey, uh, you were a musician in Estonia. Tell us about, you know, your life before this journey. Uh, well, I've been studying music all my life. At uh, five years old, I started to learn singing in kindergarten. Then at seven, I started to learn trumpet. At ten years of age, uh, I started to learn piano. 
and later uh, composing music, how to write melodies, harmonies. Do you find that, you know, traveling, you have been able to make use of that? Yes, a lot, a lot. Uh, I have a very good recorder with me, sound recorder. So for me, the music is the language of feelings, language of emotions. So many times I have so many experiences, but I don't know how to put them in the words. So I start singing, I record new melodies, and later with these melodies, I can compose uh, new music. One of the instruments that you're very much tied to is uh, the trumpet. Um, so today, we actually have a trumpet right here in our studio. I have it right here for you. So if it, it's possible, would you please play us yes. a short sure. piece? Yes, okay. I, will, I would love to play the national anthem of uh, Estonia. Oh, the national anthem. Thank you so much. Do you find that in this journey you get to introduce more about your country? Yes, many times I've been visiting some schools and universities. Then I share some videos about Estonia. Because in Estonia only 1.3 million people, just over 1 million. Yes, so it's very a very small sm country. So it's normal that most of the people, they don't know. Now, as with uh, any other place in the world, obviously when you came to Vietnam you stayed in the homes of many of the locals, uh, among the 170 homes that you stayed at so far um, in your journey. Tell us about your homestay experience here in Vietnam. In Vietnam, I stayed now around uh, 10 or 11 homes. Sometimes I've been invited just from the street. Uh, sometimes some people organize for me a homestay. In Vietnam home, I also feel very, very comfortable, very relaxed, very peaceful. Every home, of course, different because every family is different. So right now I'm staying here in Ho Chi Minh uh, in one home. Uh, uh, he is my uh, martial art uh, teacher. Yes, he has, is uh, that him? Yes, this photo. Uh, his name is uh, Mr. Dong uh, Speed. And uh, he has a black belt, uh, five then black belt in Taekwondo. Uh, and he will teach me some uh, moves to protect myself. I hope I never need them need but them. i hope i don't need i don't i hope i don't have to use but yes. just in case some fast moves in the five days mego stayed in ho chi minh city he received martial arts training from win dang dong a martial arts instructor with a fifth dan black belt in taekwondo here mego learned basic movements in kung fu taekwondo and judo so he could be prepared if a situation requiring defense technique arises Migo là một chàng trai à, có một cái cái tâm rất là tốt. Từ vì tôi đi với cầu ta, tôi dẫn vào à, nhà bảo tàng tôi ác chiến tranh. Sau khi đi về thì tôi thấy cậu ta rất là buồn và tôi hỏi tại sao cậu ta buồn. Cậu ta nói à, tại sao đế quốc Mỹ lại giết hại người danh thường nhiều như vậy và cậu ta hầu như muốn khóc. Cậu ta biết thương cái đồng loại, có nghĩa là cái tâm cậu ta rất tốt. Đúng là một con người rất là đạo. Do đó tôi truyền thụ võ công cho cậu ta mà tôi cảm thấy uh, không có ân hạnh và tôi nghĩ rằng cậu ta sẽ sử dụng đúng trong cái trường hợp uh, cần thiết. Martial arts instructor Dong also led a group of 13 people to walk alongside Mego from Tan Ha Market in Landong Province to Ho Chi Minh City. Mới đầu tham gia thì mình nghĩ là cái đi bộ này chắc là cũng đi chơi chơi thôi, đi một nhóm cho vui 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 vậy đó. Tại vì là mình nghĩ là ban đầu là sáng sớm đi này, xong là chiều tối đi này, buổi trưa nắng thì nghỉ. Nhưng mà khi đến khi mà bắt đầu cuộc hành trình thì sốc tàn tập. 
Bởi vì à, hầu như là đoàn di chuyển à, nguyên ngày và và giữa trời rất là nắng 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 kinh khủng luôn đấy mà nắng 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 mà phát sợ luôn nhưng mà đoàn vẫn vẫn đi và ngày đầu tiên thì thực sự là sốc qua ngày thứ hai buổi tối là bắt đầu chân đau và ngày thứ hai thì chân phòng lên và sưng bắt đầu là sưng là đi hết nổi là cứ đi là lết là lết là lết mình đi bằng cái đôi chân của mình khác với những cái chuyến mà mình đi du lịch khác nó còn vất vả hơn nhiều cảm giác như là mình vượt quá cái giới hạn của mình rồi vậy mà không hiểu tại sao mà anh mây gâu lại có thể đi được cái cái cuộc hành trình dài 3 năm trời à, vượt qua hơn 15 000 km phải nói là để mà đi được như vậy thì anh quả là một con người mà quá 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 nghị nghị lực luôn mà không thể nào tưởng tượng nổi luôn á nếu mà ảnh có quá gian lên xe đó đi một quãng uh, đó nhưng mà không đi bộ thì anh sẽ quay lại cái điểm mà anh dừng đi bộ và đi lại đi bộ có nghĩa là đây là một hành trình mego đi là đi bộ là trăm phần trăm không không có vì mệt mà mà nghỉ đi xe gì hết đó là một điều học được và học học từ đó là khi mà mình làm cái gì đó mình phải làm cho nó uh, đúng đúng cái trăm phần trăm và chất lượng của của cái điều mà mình đã muốn làm After the journey with Mega, each member of the group found valuable experience for themselves. Sau khi đi bộ với Mega về thì tự nhiên mình nghĩ là quãng đường ngắn mình không thể đi xe được, mình phải đi bộ. Mà tự nhiên mà bây giờ là cứ mỗi sáng bây giờ là đều đặn thức dậy và đặt mục tiêu của mình là ngày hôm đó là phải cố gắng là 10 km. Trước đây sẽ chưa bao giờ nghĩ là mình có thể đặt cái kế hoạch đó ra chứ nói chi là làm nhưng mà sau khi đi với Mega rồi thì cái điều đó là điều chắc chắn phải làm được. Mình nghĩ cái cái đau này mình không vượt qua được thì những cái đau khác chắc mình khó có thể vượt qua nên mình cứ cố gắng, cố gắng Và sau cái thử thách này tôi cảm thấy tôi mạnh mẽ hơn, yêu đời hơn, lạc quan hơn How is it walking with such a big group after, you know, a long time of walking mostly by yourself? With such a big group, 13 people, to walk five days, I was a little bit nervous because I don't have uh, previous experience. But it was fun, and we also slept in many local homes. We go in the evening, we go to the home. We are this group, like like you see here, <laughs> seven yes. seven men, we, men in one room, uh, girls in the other room. Everybody had a lot of blisters, a lot of yes. pain in the legs. Some girls uh, after after first day, they walk they walk very very heavy, <laughs> and the, with the backs. And I was thinking they will stop today, they cannot continue, but they continued they until continue. the day. I was wow. so impressed, I really admire the group, our group, the willpower and the group energy, very powerful. Yes, you mentioned that Vietnam is the second country where you stayed the longest. Yes. Probably after India, India right? And then it's also where you mo feel most welcome. Mm. Is that still yes. true? Yes, it's correct, yes. I feel I got more deeply into the history, learning uh, more detail about the details of the war, of the history. So uh, I understand uh, more deeply about uh, Vietnam people. And I feel so, <laughs> it's so hard to express my feelings. I feel so great people, so friendly, so, uh, so helpful, so super helpful, so giving. Now leaving Vietnam, I feel like I'm leaving uh, my, like, I, I have so strong like feeling of home, almost groundedness here, rootedness. You are three years into your journey now. Um, have you ever thought about the main reason why you're traveling? I also don't see all the reasons. I, I'm sure I don't see. Maybe I understand later. But now I plan to continue six or seven years more. So for me, this is a very uh, personal, uh, I would say, mission. I just feel I have to do it. It feels so right uh, way for me uh, to live my life. Uh, and also I feel it helps me in many, many ways to become more rich and a better uh, human being. And also when I visit some schools, I try to inspire young people. I try to tell them that no matter what happens in life, sometimes, you know, we, uh, everything is so positive. But sometimes no, sometimes we have many negative, uh, uncomfortable mm. things. So I try to tell them that even in the times of, even in hard, difficult times, Try to still uh, be thankful, try to be thankful even for the negative things. And uh, I personally try to have this attitude that all kinds of negative things or challenges can only help me to become stronger and better. And also I collect many stories from local people. I'm interested in collecting real uh, life stories. Mm. I've collected 
remarkable life death stories, uh, love stories. So later I would want to write a book about yes. that. It will happen, I think, after when I finish. So not only about my experiences, but all the stories that I collected. What do you feel about this journey ahead? I'm very excited. Every day I wake up, I feel, wow, another day, a miracle. And every day for me is very different. So it's, I, and I, I feel it's a very big privilege, my lifestyle. Uh, and I, 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 I try to be thankful for every day. In many ways, you know, every heartbeat uh, and every breath, it's an uh, unrepeatable gift. Uh. Well, we wish you the very best of luck, the very best of health, and the very best of love and respect and admiration mm -hmm. everywhere that you go. Um, and that you will continue in this journey six, seven years ahead. We hope to welcome you back to Vietnam one day so that you can tell us about this continued journey. Thank you very much. I also wish uh, good for you. Yes, good luck. And that also has wrapped up this edition of Talk Vietnam with Meiko Mark, his incredible journey um, around the world and passing through here in Vietnam and learning about the wonderful good nature of humans and most importantly, learning more about the world and himself as well in the process. Thank you very much for tuning in on this edition of Talk Vietnam. We'll see you more next time. Goodbye for now. Come on.